Okay, welcome to Learning Target 5. We're going to start talking about the fundamental counting principle. Uh, so when you toss a coin, N of S, because there are two outcomes, head and tail. Um, so N of S equals 2. So there's a total number of ways that occur. So how many ways can you toss 2 coins, 3 coins, 4 coins, or N coins? So I want you to think about that for a second, and we'll talk about it. So learning target is, I know a tree diagram is used to combine events or actions. So we can actually use a tree diagram for this scenario. And then we can count pathways by multiplying. And the slot method is a really efficient way to do that to replace the tree diagram. We're going to learn that today. Uh, the tree diagram for three coins would look like this. So head or tail is the first. Head or, and then if, after you flip a head or a tail, you could flip head or tail. And so what we've shown here is all eight different outcomes, head, head, head tail head tail and the pathways through the tree to find the outcome. It's a really efficient way to count that we have eight eight outcomes. So there's probably two or more heads. We just count the outcomes with two or more heads. So you can say one, two, three, four out of eight or one out of two. Okay, a uh, little like traveling question. Mr. Jordan's traveling to Helsinki, Finland. Um, his travel agent offers four flights from Toronto to Warsaw first, and then three flights from Warsaw to Helsinki. How many ways can he travel from Toronto to Helsinki? And so you've got like a tree diagram to show the four flights to Warsaw and the three flights to Helsinki. And so we've got 12 ways. So we calculate probabili probabilities after we've got that. Is there a quicker way? Absolutely. You could just take four times three and get 12. The probability takes H2. You can see all the flights, all the pathways with H, with H2, which should be 4 to 12 or 1 out of 3. Okay, which is what we thought because there's one flight to Helsinki out of 3, or one H2 out of 3. So if one action can be formed N, M ways, so Toronto to Warsaw is 4 ways, and a second action is N ways, so Toronto Hels or Warsaw to Helsinki is 3 ways. And then say there's another flight that could be from P ways, and so on. And the total number of choices M times N times P, and that's shown in a tree diagram. And that's what we call the fundamental counting principle. And think about counting, remember, as multiplication. Um, that's some, that's a multiplication is a way to count more efficiently. Sorry. Notice that Mr. Jordan would take a flight to Warsaw and a flight to Helsinki. The word and would require us to multiply these two amounts together. Two flights to take. We've got two slots. We're going to multiply, and we'll multiply the numbers three times four. And uh, that's actually in the wrong order. It should be uh, four times three. Okay, because the first way is to there's four ways for the first flight, three ways for the second. Probability, if we want to talk about probability, um, we could use the fundamental counting principle again. So if you want to take the first flight to Warsaw and one of the last two flights, we can put two slots down. We got one way to do the first flight and two ways to do the next. And so there's 2 out of 12, which is 1 out of 6. You can also draw a tree diagram with probabilities in it, so almost so that you don't have to draw all of the lines. And so if you know you want to go to Warsaw, the first flight, and then one of the last two to Helsinki, we can draw a tree diagram with just those combinations. And on the line, we draw a little probability so that you can multiply. And there will be a practice question for that. Um, it's going to be the chance of rain question um, where you can actually just draw like there's two opportunities but it's not an equal chance so it's a one quarter times two thirds chance and so we can still just draw the slot method the probability is one quarter for the first one and two thirds for the second one and so you still get two out of twelve so you're allowed to like use probabilities in the slot method as well just like you can use them in tree diagrams Independent trials, uh, we learned about mutually exclusive, non-mutually exclusive last day, and so here we talk about independent trials. 
So a trial is independent if it acts independently of the previous trial. Examples are rolling dice, flipping coins. Uh, the previous trial doesn't impact the future trial. A trial is called dependent if the number of outcomes depends on what has happened before or before or on another trial. Drawing cards without replacing. Um, chance of rain and success in a, in a football game or a field hockey game. Those kind of things. Like you, you might be better in the rain or worse in the rain. But if it does come up rain, that will impact the chance that you're going to win. Tree diagrams are very helpful for dependent trials. Um, and slot method two works as well, but um, it just you just want to see what's happening. So example of, of something like just with the slot method, uh, where you've got a restriction. Uh, so this is just really a probability example. Um, we can use the slots uh, to find out. Um, the number of ways to do president times vice president secretary. If you have to be the president, there's only one way for that to happen. And then since you're already the president, there's 19 people that could be the vice president, 18 people that could be the secretary. And the total ways, which is what N of S is, um, you don't have to be the president. So there's 20 people that could be. 19 ways that we can be the vice president. 18 ways to be the secretary. If we divide those two numbers, 19 times 18 is 342, 20, 19, and 18 is 68, 40, we get 1 out of 20, which you can see the 19s cancel and the 18s cancel. Okay? Which is kind of what you'd expect. Like, this is not a very tricky question because, like, the probability that you're the, the president is just 1 out of 20 because you pick the president first. Conditional probability formula. I don't love this formula, but I want, I want to expose it to, to you. Uh, it's the probability of A and B, so the probability that two things happen is the probability that the first thing happens times the probability that the second thing happens, probability B, given A has happened. And so if you have uh, dependent trials, then you have this idea of B given A. Okay? Um, Dependent trials this requires uh, taking one away from N of S, but it, it really does depend on the situation. Like you might have to take one away from the the numerator or N of A as well. Uh, for independent events, P this this second part is just PB, um, so it's it doesn't matter like because it doesn't impact it. So if like you're rolling dice, um, probability of A times the probability of B is the way to do it. Um, if you want to say, okay, what's the probability of getting a 4 than a 6? Well, it's 1 out of 6 times 1 out of 6. But if you're uh, doing something like flipping cards and you're not replacing them uh, back in the deck, then that changes what the, the probability of the second one is. I'll show you an example. You're randomly drawing a card from a deck, replacing it, then drawing another card. What's the probability of choosing a 3 than an ace? Well, for the first card, it could be the probability of drawing a 3, which is 4 to 52. Then, draw an ace. Since we're replacing the first card, it's again 4 to 52. What is the probability of being two, dealt two kings in a row, a king and then a king, if you don't replace? Well, the first way it's 4 to 52, because it's 4 kings out of 52. But the second probability is no longer 4 to 52, because there's not 4 kings left in the deck. There's three, and there's not 52 cards in the deck, there's 51. And so that's what we mean by conditional probability. Um, so the, that number there, 3 out of 51, is not really the probability of drawing a king, but it's the probability of drawing a king given that you already drew a king. Okay? But I wouldn't worry too much about the formula. It, it does seem to make sense that this is what's happening. Okay? So here's some questions that you can practice. Here's the, the, the game where with the rain. It does help to draw a tree diagram here. And you can draw a tree diagram to say, um, to put and put the probabilities on the lines. Okay. And here, this is a good question for the slot method. Okay.